Hi everyone, I'm currently working on my latest Witcher 3 quest analysis video on Broken Flowers, but it kind of broke my spirit for a bit, so I'm procrastinating by ranking the main quest from the prologue. Hope you all enjoy this little palette cleanser. I'm aiming for that quest analysis to be ready for next week, but for now, here are my rankings. Coming in at number 5 is the incident at White Orchard, and this brings up the rear because I didn't even realize it was its own quest. I only knew of its existence because of the Witcher 3 wiki, and I don't blame myself for not realizing this because it occurs in between Geralt receiving his reward for killing the Griffin and reuniting with Yennefer. There is no indication though that it's a separate quest. Geralt enters the tavern, we get a pretty strong cutscene of the tensions boiling over among the local populace, we have one fight, and then we segue into the cutscene where Geralt reunites with Yennefer. Nowhere does it indicate that this cutscene heavy time in the tavern was its own quest, nor why it needed to be. It all feels like part of the same story, and I imagine it's only structured like this to dole out more XP for game balance reasons. But that's not justification enough for its existence in my book, so it comes in at number 5. At number 4, we've got Imperial Audience. This isn't a bad quest, it fills players in on a lot of the backstory from prior games as well as what's happening currently in the world and what the main thrust of the plot is going to be, namely finding Ciri. We also get the hilarious image of watching Geralt learning to bow, and the inherent tension with Geralt interacting with the Nilfgaardians, particularly Emir, is riveting. Neither man backs down, and it sets up Emir as a formidable adversary, albeit one that isn't utilized much in the rest of the game. Imperial Audience also has a nice conversation between Geralt and Yennefer, as well as maybe the greatest example of Geralt trying to kill someone with just his look. But beyond the world building and interesting character dynamics, the gameplay here screams that this is just a transition quest. This is the bridge between the proper prologue in White Orchard and the start of the main game in Velen. And so the gameplay amounts to just walking around the palace of Vizima and maybe playing Gwent. There just isn't anything else here and for that reason it's number 4 on the list. And coming in at number 3 is Lilac and Gooseberries and I realize that ranking quests in this game is tough because of how incestuous the quest can get. Lilac and Gooseberries is intertwined with the Beast of White Orchard bookending it with a search for Yennefer to the point that they feel almost like one giant quest. But in between that Yennefer-centric start and finish, this being a video game, we need an obstacle for Geralt to overcome before he can find her. In this case, a griffin that needs to be put down. And killing said griffin is where the Beast of White Orchard takes the reins. And that means most of the critical gameplay is loaded into the Beast of White Orchard, while Lilac and Gooseberries sort of just eases you into the main narrative with some minor exploration and side questing to go along with it. And that narrative is very strong, but this quest is structured more to set up another quest rather than to be its own fully formed entity that can stand on its own, and that keeps it from rising higher in this list. And now we're at number 2 and I'm going to immediately contradict myself by putting a quest that has even less gameplay up here, Kaer Morin. All we have is a decent combat tutorial in the Kaer Morin training yard and a god awful race down the ramparts between Geralt and Ciri, both of which are entirely optional. And one has to wonder how is Ciri so incompetent at simply running when she was so impressive during her blindfolded training? And the answer is kind of obvious, it's a cutscene! And that's what Kaer Morin is chock full of, impactful and memorable cutscenes. Every moment here is incredible, everything is working in concert to establish Geralt, his connections to other characters, and the threat that looms on the horizon. Kaer Morin weaves all of that into roughly 10 minutes and it's handled exquisitely. And without a doubt, this quest has my favorite moment from the entire prologue, that bathtub sequence. But it's not naked Geralt that I'm looking for here, nor is it naked Yennefer. No, what this sequence really demonstrates is what drives Geralt, what motivates him, and what gives him happiness. That's what Kaer Morin is all about. And right when the quest ends, Geralt is thrust back into his normal life, searching for Yennefer, Ciri, and meaning in this bleak and dark world. And even though Kaer Morin is all just a dream, I think this quest hits harder than any of the others in the prologue because it represents what Geralt wants most out of life. But even if it hits harder emotionally than the other quests, it doesn't quite reach the top spot. No, that honor goes to the Beast of White Orchard. If Lilac and Gooseberries was the appetizer that set things up, then Beast is the real meat and potatoes. It's where The Witcher 3 actively encourages players to engage in its primary mechanics. Things like crafting potions, bombs, and investigating monsters to identify their weaknesses, these are the tentpoles of the game, and the Beast of White Orchard handles their introductions brilliantly. The final boss fight isn't quite as riveting as I'd like, and that's a problem throughout the base game of The Witcher 3, but the way the Griffin's presence is felt throughout the quest is top notch. Everyone is talking about it. The innkeeper's cousin was attacked by it, the Nilfgaardians lost some manpower to it, Tamira's friend was nearly killed and is now fighting for her life because of the Griffin. It just feels like this monster is truly wreaking havoc on the populace. It makes this quest feel so thematically consistent. 
but it's so much more than just prepping for and hunting the griffin. This is also teaching the player about the primary gameplay loop. The quest has a bit of a higher recommended level, so players are subtly guided to start doing side content, and this makes doing Witcher contracts, finding places of power, and just exploring feel like a natural part of the quest. It's like a tutorial on how to play The Witcher 3 and interact with the open world, but it never actually feels like a tutorial because CDPR gives real agency to the player by letting them explore White Orchard to their heart's content. And even though the quest is not particularly replayable, it's still one of the most expertly crafted tutorials I've ever seen in a game, so it's gotta take the number one spot on this list. So thanks for watching and putting up with the slight delay in Witcher 3 quest analysis videos. I assure you the next one should be coming out soon. Um, I do plan on doing more ranking videos in the future. This was pretty fun. In fact, you're gonna get an additional ranking right now. I'm gonna rank how the viewer should handle the end of this video. In last place, you can just click off. In first place, you can like and subscribe. Can you do much better than two rankings in one video? I, I think not.